Awesome. We are live on Facebook now. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Pardon me. We'll stay in issue here. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, wow. Sorry. Good, e good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. We have the wonderful chef Ola Femi Manley here from Ola Appetit and who created this beautiful, wonderful global destination dinner for us. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Chef. Hi, everybody on Facebook. Hi, everybody who stopped in from the Fosse today. And hi, everybody that, um, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so very much for giving me the opportunity to prepare food for you. And I was thinking about where we could start. So I started with the destination dinner in South Africa because I was thinking about barbecue as it's going closer to the summer and thinking about different destinations of barbecue because everybody has a little bit of a different spin on barbecue. So what I did was uh, some South African flavors, some Portuguese flavors, and um, kind of wrapped it up with some new modern, uh, modern twists like um, a hummus, uh, black eyed pea hummus was kind of a, something a little bit different to go with the plants and chips. So, um, I don't know what else to say. You know, That's beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. The peanut soup was also the uh, the the, the uh, start of the meal was the peanut soup. Then it followed in with the plants and chips. So you get a little bit something a little bit crispy. So kind of tell us for the folks before we dive into the meal. Tell us a little bit for the folks who aren't familiar with you how they can find you. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, you know, the background, who you are, why you chose cooking, why is this your passion? Okay, oh wow. Okay, I'm gonna take you way back. Okay, imagine this. This is December 1966. I was four years old and I got an Easy Bake Oven for Christmas. And I was allowed to use that Easy Bake Oven free range. Didn't know how to read, but I was mixing up packages of stuff. I don't know what it was, but I'm tearing it up and mixing up and they let me do it. My sister, my brother, my mother just let me have go at that, that easy bake oven. And what I found out was that people like food and food makes people happy. And they were just saying how good everything was that I made. And even though I didn't think it tasted good, they said it did. So it made me want to continue to get compliments and phrases. So I'm like, I'm gonna make food. So I continue to make food from the age of four until now. So, you know, like that's 54 years and I'm still in love with the oven. That's awesome, that's yeah, awesome. I'm and you told me that you were located in Duquesne originally and you had like so many stores. So you had a storefront and now- Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. No, actually my first restaurant in the United States was actually in the Hill on Center Avenue. Okay, where we're, we're, we're at guys. <laughs> where we're at, it was actually at the old Alice Hotel. And it was a wonderful experience. I love this community. I love this community. Wonderful experience. It was one of the, um, yeah, I, I I, that, that's, that's where I cut my teeth at the Alice Hotel. I started cooking there. And then one of our best things was like, we would do Friday mm -hmm. fish fries. Mm -hmm. And we always would sell out sweet potato pies, always gone. And just about everything else we made, you know, it was, you know, it was real well supported and what we see by the community. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Now, um, before we go ahead and get into the meal, let's just make sure everybody's all ready. Um, <laughs> I see some something going on in the chat. Everybody's loving our Easy Bake, easy bake Oven. Remember, hashtag Easy uh -oh. Bake Forever. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, honestly, you know, I remember too, uh, you know, me being younger with older siblings, you know, my uh -huh. older aunts and my older yeah. uh, cousins and things. I remember their Easy Bake Oven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, you don't think about it as a child, but that could be a child's first exposure to culinary, you know? It, yeah. like trying, and look where we are today. Look where we are. I remember that day. It's like, like, like it, was, it was the highlight of my life. I love it. Yeah. And it, and it was also like, it was a pivotal point where I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, make food. And I didn't really know how. Like, this is my sister-in-law right here. And she'll tell you, I didn't know how to cook. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know how to make anything, but I like to be with food. And, I, and it's, it's, it's I, I'm, sometimes I look back and I'm like amazed. Mm -hmm because I didn't even know how to peel an onion. <laughs> I didn't, it's no joke. I mean, I could, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little girl who saw me peeling an onion and said to me, you don't know how to peel an onion, because I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was peeling off too much of the onion. Mm -hmm. And she said, and everyone was like, go correct her, because I, I was an adult. Mm -hmm. But I was like, thank you, because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, and, that's good, uh, that's yeah. the journey. Yeah, that's the journey. So I, so I wasn't even, this is one of my favorite stories that I'm gonna mention to you, okay. but Monica just put in the chat, she needs to put an order in for a sweet potato pie. 
Oh, okay. re re really quickly, I mean, we don't have sweet potato pie here, but right. please tell the sweet potato pie story about the competition and how you talk about how you make the perfect sweet potato pie. Okay, no, I shouldn't have won. That was <laughs> in the hill. That was that was another thing. Mm -hmm. It was build the hill. They were having a bake off, and it was an older lady who lived down the street, right before we were at the high rise, and she made a sweet potato pie. Most people think it's very easy to make a sweet potato pie, but it's not. To make a perfect sweet potato pie is you have to be almost a chemistry master because it, 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 it's, it's a work. You have to have the right amount of yams. You have to cook them and prepare them to the right amount of al dente. You have to have the right amount of cream, the right temperature, and the whole technique of making that sweet potato pie. So I never liked sweet potato pie in and of itself. Never cared for it until I had the perfect sweet potato pie. And this woman was an older woman and she made the perfect sweet potato pie, had the perfect texture. She made her own pie crust and had the right amount of spice to it. And I've been chasing that sweet potato pie ever since I tasted it to try to perfect it. And I've gotten near close, but I'm not, it's not perfect. Listen, so I'm gonna I'm 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 uh, piggyback on Monica's order and grab a sweet potato so, pie too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, Listen, see, we got some sweet potato pie lovers out here. Sweet oh. potato pie. So, all right, say no more. Sound like we're going to have a bake-off soon. Come okay. send to Fonsi. But let's okay. dive into the meal. Um, so for the folks who did have, you know, did join us via meal, uh, they did order, um, they have the full meal. So let's kind of walk through, like you said, the different stages. Um, you okay. said you have a, a soup at first. Do you want to kind of? We started out with a peanut soup. Because like I said, we wanted to take you to a destination. We wanted you to get a full experience of South African cooking, African West African cooking. So we started out with a, with a peanut soup. One was vegan, and then the other one was made with a chicken stock. You know, so it had just a little bit of pepper, but not much. Mm -hmm. And then it was followed by the plantain chips, which has the, the black eyed pea hummus. And on top of the black eyed pea hummus, yeah, that's the black eyed pea hummus. It has a little bit of, um, it has, yeah, it has a little bit. Those are the chips. Yeah, we made the chips this morning. Yeah, so, okay, so you made it. has a little bit of black black sea salt. So go ahead and, so salt. you made the plantain chips. Yeah, I made them this morning. Mm. And they're crispy. So can you tell us a little bit about the process of okay. making the plantain chips, of making the hummus, just everything that went into this? First, the first mm, thing you got to do this is, good is you got to be happy. <laughs> when you start making Listen, and food. I know you're happy in your kitchen. Yeah, you think you have to be happy because oh, whatever delicious. energy you have, it's going to transmit to the food. So when I start making food, the first thing I do is I call on my ancestors. I call on everyone who has ever cooked anything in a kitchen. Any man, any woman, any little kid who's ever stirred a pot, who's ever made any type of food. I say, come on down, share my kitchen, mm -hmm. stand with me and infuse your knowledge and your love of whatever food of that I'm preparing, infuse the wisdom and be ex uh, executing this dish as perfectly as I possibly mm -hmm. can. So that's what I do when I start cooking. I get happy, I call on ancestors, it don't matter who they are. Because if you cook, you start the pot, you're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that's what I do. Okay, okay, that's awesome. So let us know, you know, for the folks who did, have a meal, you know, drop it in the chat. Let us know why you're tasting the hummus. Let us know if you're, you know, loving the plantain chips. I know you are. I already know. I want to ask them to people who had the meal that they taste a little bit of pepper because I made a calypso pepper and you only got a real little bit of it. But if you like it, you can get a whole bunch more because I got jars and bottles mm -hmm. in my house. But the pepper, okay. The pepper was, I grew the peppers and I make the pepper sauce and, um, it's made from scorpion peppers. And scorpion pepper is indigenous to Trinidad. Okay. And it is the hottest non-hybrid pepper on the planet. Okay. It's like, so, some, like some scotch bowl, you know, off the chain, you know, B-U-T's or B, you know, whatever, mm. you know. So this is delicious. The pepper in it, I think, is so good because it's not super intense. It kind of uh -huh. comes on the back end. Right. And the fact that it has that oil in there kind of settles it down a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you said it's the it's the it's the only non-hybrid pepper. It's the hottest. That's the hottest non. Non-hybrid pepper. Now, the, one of the hottest peppers is a Carolina Reaper. Right. That's one of the hottest peppers, but it's a hybrid. Okay. But the scorpion pepper is a it's an heirloom genuine breed and so you get the sweetness from this pepper it's really hot but it has sweetness too so when you taste that pepper i mix that pepper with a little bit of mango okay Ooh. but Ooh. but but you have the you know the heat from it 
Oh. So you dip your little balls into the pepper and eat them. Is that from the um the mango, like the sauce that you had me taste? The yes. Oh, that was the sauce. I that is good. Look at that. Let's see, taste tamara. No, he didn't taste the tamara. He tasted the uh the, the pepper sauce with the mango. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's so good. It's yeah, so good. Yeah. Um okay so really quickly give me an example so you said that uh, a hybrid so you put me in perspective you know so we talked about before and we talked about the scotch bonnets what are, yeah. so with this pepper the scorpion pepper what else would you cook with it what have you made oh you can make everything with it it's, it's a hot pepper I, I like to use it in soups i like to use it in sauces but basically i make pepper sauce out of it okay. and then i can use the pepper sauces i want to season whatever food i want Okay, let's see. They're talking to us. They're talking to us. They're loving the plantain chips. They're loving oh. the black eyed peas hummus. Oh, I love it. I love it. People are loving it. Yeah, listen, listen, Sister Kendra, we do this food. Um, listen. And yes, okay, so and somebody just said said, said a really good point. Um, Marimba just said, oh, I thought she said it's natural. Kind of kind of explain to us, you know, we were talking about the quality of your food okay. and how you, you know, use higher quality, fair trade, organic, you're vegan. Kind of tell us about, you know, your love. You talked about being happy, going to yeah. a career. Okay, now y'all gonna get it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting close up. Okay, because see, for me, food is not just about making it, but it's about giving you an experience and doing as least amount of damage to our planet as possible. I don't want to do any damage to Mother Earth because we need her. Mm -hmm. This is the only Earth we have, you know, amongst our our solar system. I don't know if there's another one, but if there is, it's it's not going to impact me Different because it's too far away. So, long story said, I love this planet, and one of the one of the things I'm most proud of in my life is that I was an original Hooter. And when I say that to people, people think about the Hooters restaurant, but I'm talking about Hooters as an environmental organization that was launched in 1972 and it was geared specifically to children okay. there was a mascot which was the owl would see give a who don't pollute. <laughs> like so, that. <laughs> yeah, that's what that, that was that was the official and back in those days they had the weekly reader so you would go to school you get the weekly reader and in the back of the weekly reader they had an offer send in 75 cents mm -hmm. you know okay. you put the quarters <laughs> on the envelope inside the envelope you tape them down and send them off and a couple of weeks later you get a coloring book you get a hat and a whistle okay. and you're official. So I became a Hooter. I started talking about environmental um, protection back in 1972. When the Eastern Food Co-op launched in 1981 or 82, I became one of their first members. Okay. You know, so food is really important to me. It's important how it's grown. It's important how it's harvested. It's important how it's stored. It's important how the people who process that food, how they're treated. So when you start talking about sourcing food, I want to source local mm -hmm. and I want to source the best global food I can get. And I also want to make sure that it's fair trade. That's beautiful. Because if it's not fair trade, then we are involved in some in scrupulous mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. because the people who are making our food are being exploited. And I can't really enjoy a meal or, or food products knowing that somebody's being exploited right. and I'm helping to do it. Right. So it costs a lot more. Like the meal that I provided today really should be $45, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that I could have some money. <laughs> listen, listen, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to support. We're definitely here to support. So after after we have these tastings, you know, you're going to have a whole, a whole okay. bunch of new things. But and then when you have that restaurant space, cough, cough, wink, wink then yeah. folks will be able to come in by the herd. So that's what we're going to okay. do. So you just, basically, long story short, you just told us that you treated it. It's not new to this. That's right. So I love yeah. it. I love the history. I love it. Now, let's get into it. We know that we're, we're I know that people are hungry. You kind of let us know how good this is. And you mentioned these balls a little bit a few times. So let's start there. Okay, those are puff puff balls. Okay. And you said, um, you, yeah, everybody you dive them, in. We have them with some hot sauce. Okay. You can have them with mango chutney, which I'm going to grab you some mango chutney. Please, Excuse please. Mm. Grab you some mango chutney. And I've got one little hot sauce left in this book. And you can enjoy this. I love how you how you often okay. play with the spicy and the sweet because yeah. I love spicy, but I think that sometimes it gets overwhelming to a point where it's no longer taste, right? And I want to enjoy the fact that it's spicy. Okay. So the fact that you give a sweet and you kind of mellow it out. And it plays games, you know, you'll get spicy on the back end, you know. So I so I, I appreciate that a lot. Let's get this mango, mango yeah. chutney going. And then I play with flavors that most people wouldn't put together. You do. But but they work are. well. You know, like I was so I was so glad I did basil 
as a, you know, with sweet things. Mm -hmm. as well as with savory mm -hmm. and then work together. And I don't know what I did today that I it was like, it was a different something. I don't know. Okay, let's see what they, are y'all talking to me? Let's see, let's see. Awesome, everybody's loving it. We want we want you to have some money, Ola. That's what they're saying. Great goals, <laughs> oh, more you. power to you. Let's do it. Thank you. And, I love y'all. I love you. Thank you. Really quick while, look, mango <laughs> chutney is my favorite. They're, oh, they're loving okay. it with the puff puff fried bread. So okay. really quick now. I wanted to tap back into this sister beer. As you can see, I'm, 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 I'm on empty because it's that good. So I'm going to tap into the sister beer for the folks who weren't available to, I mean, to hear us when we kind of got started. Um, ginger beer, more familiar, but I'm going to let Chef Ola talk about this briefly while you tap into your uh, mango chutney and fry bread. Okay. Sister beer may, is debuted to me at the Pittsburgh International Market somewhere. about six years ago. And what happened was I was, my booth was right next to a sister who was from East Africa. I brought ginger beer to sell and she brought sister beer. And when I saw her and she was explaining to me what her sister beer was, well, I took my ginger beer off the table. I'm like, no, everybody, y'all got to taste the sister's beer, go and get the sister's beer. So we exchanged recipes and I said, here I am making sister beer. And that's how I, that's what I call it. Delicious. So there's ginger beer, sister beer, sorrow, and there's a couple other um, beverages that I that I make and, and bottle and you know for, for your for your pleasure. Notice the process. She said makes and bottles. So <laughs> we got these custom bottles. Old Femi made the they're, they're she didn't make the bottles, but she yeah, bottled yeah. the drink herself. Now I'll tell you guys, I had the opportunity of having a sister beer, her ginger beer, and the, the strawberry lemonade. The strawberry lemonade. Now if you're a lemonade fanatic like myself, you need to get the strawberry lemonade. Fresh strawberries, the taste, the flavor. It was like like July in a glass, like summertime cookout. It was so good, y'all. It didn't make it home. I'm, I, I drank it in the car. I had like a little swig at home. I'm telling you, we're gonna we're gonna get y'all some. It's delicious. Talk to me. Talk to us. Let us know. Look, July in a glass. <laughs> Talk to us. Let us let us know, y'all. Let us know if you did get the sister beer. Let us know how you feel about it. It's delicious. Trust me. Uh, you see, we're on empty. We're going good. Let's continue through. Okay. So now, everybody is, that, that, that's tuning in, thank you so very much for taking the time to tune in. Thank you so much for enjoying your food. I did everything I could to make it as enjoyable as you could, as I could. Now, I just need you, you guys to tell me what I could do better, what I did that wasn't good, and what I did that was okay. So that way I can get a barometer and continue to you know, package your food, make sure you get your food as easy as you possibly can, because it's about making your meal enjoyable for you. I want you to enjoy your whole meal, all mm -hmm. of it. So we have a few comments. Let's start with the top one. Someone asked, can you walk us through the soup? Maybe give us a little bit about the oh, your sure. inspiration, yeah. your process. Yeah. Okay, now the soup, now peanuts. It's, it, it's interesting because peanuts are always uh, related to Africa, but peanuts are really indigenous to South America, and they made their way through Africa during the, I think, the cons, the trans, you know, slave trade. Mm -hmm. They made their way back to Africa, and we love the peanuts, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm thinking about a soup that kind of kind of starts your whole meal out, mm -hmm. that will kind of stay in the same lane. So I did the peanut soup, and it reminds me of like peanut chicken. Mm -hmm. okay. So there was a vegan version, and there was one that was made with the chicken stock, mm -hmm. but it was a simple peanut soup. Okay. With with with, uh, yeah, with sweet potatoes in it. Mm, so there that's it what it was. There yeah, it is, y'all. I knew it was something. Yeah. Let's keep it going. <laughs> this drink is tasty and spicy. It would taste good with some Jamaican rum. Listen, so yes, it would. Somebody else it just would. asked, "Is it going to make a good mule?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It I just, love it. It's just really cool. Let's see what else they're saying. Mango chutney is excellent. So uh, more more chips. More plantain chips. Okay. That's some feedback right there. Oh, that's no problem. We could get you that. We mm -hmm. could do that. That's that's we, we got you. More chips. Okay. Yeah. So and really quick, while before we before we move through, um, uh -huh. so we talked about the soup. We talked about the fry bread, and you know, for folks who didn't join us in in, in immediate in the beginning. Okay. So I see some more questions. Um, kind of give us why Zimbabwe, South Africa. You know, why is this your first global destination? Wow, um, I, I, I thought about something you guys would like. Mm -hmm. And I thought about something that you may not have had before, but wouldn't be so far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Like, as you know, as far as going to maybe to do, you know, a, a Korean barbecue or something like that. But mm -hmm. um, So that's what made me say South Africa, because we like rice, you know, and it has a history with us here in America. You know, you know, um, we, do, we love rice. African people love rice. And so I just thought about those foods. That that's awesome. 
the comfort foods and easily, easily accessible because with the COVID, you don't know what you're going to get. You plan a meal right. and you go, you can't, it, it, everything is out. Right. You know, trucks aren't in, they don't know. Right. So it's, it's really dicey with food. So. so tell us a little bit, someone asked, um, how did you learn to cook? You know, give us a little bit about the inspiration um, for your style. She says your style <laughs> is so impressive, which I agree. Everything uh, I've had is amazing. How did I learn to cook? I, you know what? It, I, I'm, I'm surprised myself because <laughs> I never had any, any culinary, you know, classical training mm -hmm. at all. And um, I think what happens is that I go to the stove, I'm happy. And I ask for help mm -hmm. and help mm -hmm. comes. And it's, it's, it's just like when I was doing the vegan tarts, the vegan lemon tarts, I wanted them to, to be as close as possible, <laughs> looking, tasting like the traditional, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know what to do. And it came to me, you know, and so I was really excited. And I was really happy with the product. Now, one thing I, I wasn't happy with is that it was the first time me working with, you know, making a vegan lemon tart. I let the lemon curd overcook. So it's got, got a little bit more stiff than what I would have wanted. But y'all would probably like it because when you cut your pie, it probably stands up nice. So the vegans who had the vegan tarts, please let me know about the tart. So I'll know what to do next time. Let's see, let's see. I, I see someone talking about as a as a plant-based eater, I want to thank you very much for considering vegans, you know? Okay. And that's something that we You're talked about fun. earlier, you know, Olafemi does vegan food very well. That's something that a lot of people don't understand is that, I mean, in building community mm -hmm. from the inside out, we talked about earlier about the different food accesses, mm -hmm. shopping locally. You know, there's folks in the community who lead for, um, farming and gardening yeah. initiatives. So yeah. I think at that same token, a lot of folks are changing and understanding that what we put in our body is our fuel and it's important to really think about the quality. So mm -hmm. as plant-based eaters, you know, I know that they're pretty appreciative of the quality and care that you put into your food. And I think that that notion is now spreading more throughout the Black community. Mm -hmm. You think, I mean, tradition, I, I say even maybe five, 10 years ago, if we did this, there re we really probably wouldn't need to do a, a vegan option, vegan, you yeah. know? And it's not even just yeah. vegetarian option vegan option. Big option. Right, no. right. Yeah, well, I do see there is a more of a trend, mm -hmm. especially with African-American people. Like I was in, in, in the store yesterday, the young African-American woman, she came and she bought avocado oil mm -hmm. and the avocado spray. And I could see some of the other things that she was buying. I knew that she was more on the trajectory of a plant-based mm -hmm. whole foods diet because right. she was in Giant Eagle, but yet she was being selective of the products that she was getting. So that was um, that was news, mm -hmm. new to me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we are um, watching what we in there mm -hmm. and we're looking at the impact of mm -hmm. what we, as far as our health and the planet. Mm -hmm. And so for the, for the people who are plant-based, thank you so very much no, for I caring like about the planet. planet. Yeah, I do. My mother is a plant-based eater, so that's kind of where it kind of stems into me. She okay. wasn't plant-based my entire life, okay. but as she's transitioned to that plant-based, mm -hmm. you know, some of that knowledge just trickled down right. to me and my food habits. And I think about, you know, you know, my daughter, she's young, she's yeah. one. So she's lactose intolerant and she, she hasn't, we haven't given her meat since at all since she was born, you know, nice. so she's yeah. almost vegan. So, you know, yeah. I think about things like this, you know, we talk about folks ordering now, people going mm -hmm. to different spaces. I can appreciate that, you know, you as a chef are making that space to create that type of food for folks who are transitioning, like you said, on yeah. the, trajectory you know i would be happy to make it to show you how to cook it that's what i want to do awesome well let, let's keep it going and let's kind of dive into uh, some folks are anxious to know about the peri peri the veg, the, the tofu and the chicken okay. so kind of give us a little bit you know what is peri peri give us a little bit of history peri peri has had has a has a kind of convoluted background because some people say it's portuguese some people say it's Malaysian, mm -hmm. but I think it's a combination of the Portuguese, mm. Malaysian, and African spices. They good. use a lot of lemon, so that would be the, the Malaysian influence. Mm -hmm. And then the, the paprika would be the Spanish influence. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the method of cooking is definitely African. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, the, 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 the roast to grill is definitely African. That's delicious. Maybe kind of tell us a little bit, what you know, what are those flavors that we're hitting on? What are those profiles? Lemon, mm -hmm. pepper, mm -hmm. garlic. Mm. That's it. Okay. Lemon, pepper, garlic, and salt. That's basically the 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 the, the basis of peri peri chicken. Okay. Talk to us, y'all. How y'all feel about the peri peri? Those who have the chicken, let us know. Those who have the veggie option, let us know. This is delicious, and 
I can, you know, I from. Like to know about the pie. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the vegan we'll pie. There. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Right I'm just gonna put you to the end. <laughs> you, see, you've been thinking about it though, because you made it. You know right. what I'm saying? So you've been thinking about it since, you know, right. forever. And I didn't so. have a taster. <laughs> I used to get a taster. That you know that that's been been my job my whole life. Yeah. I've been the official taster, taster. you know, as yeah. you know, my, my grandmother being the matriarch who cooked that most of the major <laughs> but, uh, family dinners and you yeah. know for the church and things. So I love being the official taster. You always put me a little something to the side, Definitely. you know. So I, but I know a lot of folks who you know. So okay, we'll talk about you tasting your food as you go through. You know, when we talk about the, the touching on the senses. So when I sit down at this table and I smell the peri peri, I get that citrus up front, okay. and then I taste it. So kind of tell us, you know, what are some of your favorite things to cook while you know, or eat while you're cooking? You know, what are some of your oh, favorite? I don't foods? eat while I'm cooking. I don't eat after I'm cooking. It oh. takes me two days to get my appetite. No, I'm not. I'm not. It, 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 it takes me about. It takes me a while to get my appetite back because you're working with food, you're working, you're working, and you're just concentrating on executing right. the meal. So I don't cook. Sometimes I don't even taste. Sometimes I don't even nibble. Wow. You know, um, mm -hmm. I do use the exact measurements. So, be me. so that is, that, that's what helps with consistency, measurements and formulas, mm -hmm. and, you know, to get consistency. But um, I also have my own taste too much. Well, couldn't be me. I guess I, you know, me, just a regular, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm, you know, I, I love how it hits on all the senses. Like I talked about, I'm smelling the citrus at first. Right. I'm tasting different things. I'm tasting the pepper. And I love basically, you know, the sensory experience of your food, you know, just yeah. going through it with the mango chutney yeah. and the spicy early on. Now kind of mellowing out with the peri peri. The onions are kind of sweet a little bit too. Well, I do like to do that. I do like to to, to give a, a combination of flavors mm -hmm. and textures and colors mm -hmm. because I feel like the more you have in your meal, the more healthy it is, mm -hmm. the more nutrients that you're going to extrapolate from that meal, mm -hmm. the more flavors, colors, you know, textures. So that's what I try to do. I try to bring a lot to your meal because it's important to me that I give you the very best because you deserve it. <laughs> it's true. You know, we deserve it. And it's important if I can and this is this this y'all this 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 is my this is my weak spot. Because if I go to the grocery store and it's a matter of or I go to a sourcing and it's a matter of a dollar mm -hmm. that I'm going to lose or a dollar that I can make, well I'm gonna lose a dollar mm -hmm. because I'm gonna go and get the best I can possibly get. So I'm gonna just not get it by price. But I'm gonna look at what it's what you know what it's offered. Like the like the um, the tofu is sprouted, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, okay. So I've got a sprouted tofu, cost a dollar more, mm -hmm. but you're worth it anyway. So that's what I well, do. Thank you for loving yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> I love what I do, and I have to make sure that I get the best product I possibly can, and I, and that's that's what I need to be able to continue to do. So I need you guys to be able to help me to be able to do that. So when we do our next de destination dinner. If I say $45, don't think that it's inflated or overinflated. Fear exchange is another robbery. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you everything I got. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be able at the end of the day to keep my lights on and keep cooking mm -hmm. and sharing. I understand. So the meals should be $45. And if you think about the courses that you're getting, mm -hmm. and even with a dessert on top of it, and the packaging. Yeah. Please. I understand. And the yeah. love that went into it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. And you talked about, you know, when you just talked about the help, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, the favorite chef, how you got into that. Um, you oh, know, that's we, we were voting. Was, <laughs> was well, I mean, but you know, that, that, that just shows your, your visibility increasing as a chef. Well, you know well, what I'm that, saying? So. It, was, it was the scam. But what happened was I got an email about the favorite chef and I'm like, okay, cool. This is something I think I might be able to, you know, rock, mm -hmm. you know, favorite chef. You know, because I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of work, not just in the United States, but globally. And I've done a lot of ties with people throughout the world, you know, with the man, uh, the Mandela fellows in Africa and, you know, uh, Amasaji here in Pittsburgh, you know, global network. So I'm thinking, well, I have a bigger range, you know, a big reach. I can, you know, do this. But when I um, got into the competition, I realized that part of it was it wasn't just about one vote for one man, but it was about raising as much money as you possibly could mm. for feeding America. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with raising money for feeding America or making money. I understand that. But I didn't want to be driven mm -hmm. to favorite chef, pave my way with dollars when I think that my way should have been paved with goodwill. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot of goodwill. And I'm like, just vote for me. We'll make it. You know, so, but anyway, I had a, I had a great time. I got a lot of exposure and um, 
it was an it was an amazing experience. That's awesome. It was an amazing experience. That's awesome. Yeah. Someone in the chat just said that the tofu is delicious, <clears throat> and they oh, love they love the black salt edition. Kind of so why black salt versus traditional white sea Himalayan pink? You know what I'm saying? Why why black salt? I'll tell you why because that's black what power. I had. <laughs> 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 no, 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 really. I didn't want to just give y'all just, just, you know, regular Atlantic sea salt. Mm. So I had this wonderful, you know, black lava hand harvested mm. salt. And I said, this will make a really nice addition to their food as opposed to just, you know, not caring about what kind of, you know, salt that you have in here. Mm. So it, it really does. And it's supposed to have all these trace minerals and be really good for you and all of this stuff. But uh, yeah, the only salt that I really could taste the difference with is truffle salt and Florida salts. The rest of the salt, tastes like salt right okay okay let's see let's see what the folks are talking to us like they're loving the salad dressing mm. um what did you use to give the rice the bright yellow color i use hand grated turmeric and i use dried turmeric okay so you got yeah so you did so that is like a really infusion of the turmeric okay because yeah that's really good i love how you made it and the salad dressing i made the salad dressing from scratch now the vegan one i bought okay the other salad dressing i made from scratch and that is going to be available in the market as well there you go okay. very interesting thank you and i love how you mentioned earlier you know you try to promote eating the color spectrum that's one yeah. thing that i try to do too when i'm talking about you know giving mm -hmm. my daughter food and how i'm shopping really trying to make sure we're getting those dense greens mm -hmm. make sure we're getting those red right. yellow orange yeah. peppers you know i think that's important it is. It's definitely it's important. You got a little red there. Mm -hmm. so you know, Colors make the food more interesting. Yeah, it's very yes. aesthetically pleasing. It does. Yeah, I agree. When you made the plate, it was you know especially the plating. Of wow. course, we you know so many people watch all these food networks, Netflix shows, and things. Right. And, you know the emphasis on plating, but the way right. that you plated it, I think it was very artistic in a sense. You know, we talk about right. culinary arts. I think yes. it was very appropriate that we're sitting in the faucet. Oh yeah, we are. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Had to plug that, you know, come see Fossey. me guys. Come yeah. the Fossey Six yeah. Artists in Residence here in the Fossey Artist Residency Program. Just in case you guys <clears throat> didn't know. Um, but, let, you know, let us know how you guys' uh, meals are. Keep telling us about your favorite. We got some more. Let's see. Let's see what we got going. We see that people are loving the fact that it's from scratch. They can oh, taste, you. they taste the love. Oh, they taste the love what you do. I love it. I taste it as well. Thank Let, you, everyone. What else do we have going? Everyone. So we had so we had the salad, we had the yum yum yellow rice, we had the puff puff fry bird, we had the peri peri. Is it time to go into dessert? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do the let dessert. Okay. Well, we won't go grab the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. You don't like dessert? I'm not a big sweet person either, but okay. all the family's lemon tart is delicious. I have a lot of the touch, mm. but the, the cake pie. Yeah, I haven't traditionally been a um sweet person. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? <laughs> Forgot I was here. Let us know. You know, you see we're in the Fosse. This is a beautiful space here. All the family's back. Yeah. Okay, I'm back, y'all. <laughs> Sir, how about I'll take those? Yeah. You take, take them. Mm -hmm. Take this. Put it to me. Okay. Awesome. Oh, you right. Sit there. Yep. Let me. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. All right. Okay, so we got to dessert. Let me. I'm not just hard. Just for the folks. I know. I know. You have such Call great expectations. Yes. yes. You want to talk about eating the spectrum? Look at that bright, beautiful yellow, the red, the blackberry, the green. Oh, this is delicious. See the lemon. So let's go in. Let's go ahead into it. Okay. The favorite part for me making the dessert was the candy lemon. I love making candy lemons because it reminds me of lemonhead candy when I was a little kid. That was my favorite candy. Mm -hmm. So the candy lemons is like about a three day process. And so I made the candy lemon and I made the, the lemon curd for the pie this morning. And what happened was I set them and they looked like they had set up. And so I started putting the Italian buttercream on them and it wasn't quite ready. So you have to do, you have to have patience when you're baking them, enjoy. And, um, and so that's what, that was the thing that I did that I made the mistake mm. on. Mm. So mm. the Italian buttercream kind of, kind of adds like a little bit of a contrast with the mm. the lemon lemon tart so so personally lemon is one of my favorite things okay i'm not like a um 
big chocolate person. Okay, I've never been a big chocolate I'm, person. I'm like chocolate. So, you know, growing up, I've always had the other flavors, you know, lemon things, strawberry things, yes. caramels, vanillas, um, vanillas like that, exactly. Yeah. So this is delicious. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned patience, yeah. you know, so I heard you say a couple keywords keywords over this time. You said love, you said patience, you said care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So talk to us a little, if you wouldn't mind, you know, maybe oh. give us a, I know that people are loving this. Talk to us y'all about this, how, how y'all feel about this dessert, but maybe give us a little oh. bit more, um, Cause this is one of the first times that I've had like a larger portion of your dessert and this is really good. Okay. You know, all your food is delicious. Kind of maybe give us a little mm -hmm. bit of your process on this. Cause baking okay, the, is a, uh, that's, a, that's a different realm. The, the, the um, lemon tart has a sugary crust. Now for the vegans, I did the exact same thing. I did a sugary crust, but instead of using butter, I used a coconut oil. No, not a coconut oil. It was a coconut, like a coconut butter coconut type cream. of cream or something. Mm. Yeah. So I used that. And um, and it's just a shortbread crust. So that's that's what I did with that in the lemon tart. And then to kind of give a, a contrast, like I said, Italian buttercream, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Italian buttercream. How do y'all feel? Put it in the chat. Let's go. Listen, somebody said, oh, Tamara said all oh, her kids are eating her food. Oh. Kendra said she loves this. She said, amazing. We need more kinds of flavors in this area. Yeah. People always try to do international food, but it's bland. This is so flavorful. Oh. Oh, Everybody's you, everybody. loving it. Um, someone said, how do you candy lemons? Oh, it's easy to candy lemons. You have to start with love and patience. <laughs> you start with organic lemons and a very sharp knife. And you want to drop the lemons in boiling water for like about maybe 30 seconds. What that does, it just kind of takes off some of the bitterness out of the rind. And you want to slice your lemon very, very thin. So for one lemon, you might use like a half a cup of sugar and you let it set until the lemons become, become limp. And it takes maybe like about eight hours to 24 hours. After the lemons become limp and they look transparent, mm -hmm. then you take the lemons out and you put them on a drying rack. Don't put them in the oven and don't use a drying rack because they'll turn them brown and they won't look as pretty. You just want to let them ear, you just want to let them ear dry. So after you let them ear dry for a day or two, you just want to sprinkle them a little bit with sugar, <laughs> flip them over and then sprinkle them a little, a, a little bit again with sugar. And it takes about two to three days to air dry, depending on how moist, how much moisture is in the air. Mm. But they're, they're real easy to make. That sounds great. And you said this yeah. is a shortbread crust? Yeah, so just a plate. Oh, uh, man, uh, I love how light it is. It's a shortbread crust. You yeah. should see how quick she went through that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like trying to get done. I told you, you look like a master in the kitchen, <laughs> yeah. magician. Yeah, it's, it, it takes you a little bit of time, but it's worth it. I just want to know about the vegan. How did the vegans like their <clears throat> their lemon curd and their pastry dough? Talk to us, world. Let us know how you like that vegan. The Someone vegan said, okay, curd. this is helpful. When I dehydrate my lemons, they do turn brown. Thank you. So listen, we're not only <laughs> okay. giving y'all delicious foods, but now y'all are getting life-sustaining skills. Okay. We got people in the kitchen out here going to go take this knowledge, go go mm -hmm. home, experiment. So now not only are you inspiring people with the physical food, you're inspiring people to go try their own thing. This is, I love yeah. it. See what we're doing over here, y'all? Nice. Come on, man. In the Fosse, that's just what we do. Let us know. Let us know how you guys feel. Exactly. Life's like just saying his skills. Let us know how you all feel about that vegan lemon. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you have any more questions for Olafemi, let, let us know. Um you know, kind of give us, you know, what, what's ahead for you? What do you have planned? You know, I know we're going to do some more global destination yeah, dinners. What's going Listen, on? Global destination dinners. But what did I have to say? I had sent you a, a list mm -hmm. where we could go around <laughs> the world. Like, like, there's so many. I wanted to do barbecue from different cultural perspectives and different flavor palettes. Mm -hmm. And because everybody has some type of barbecue they cook out, whether it's Polynesian or Korean mm -hmm. or Jamaican or you know west indian but to do um oh, you know brazilian god. barbecue asian mm -hmm. you know so i don't know what we're good but i'm thinking because of the summer to do like the keep with the barbecue mm -hmm. flavor and mm -hmm. just do different different sides mm -hmm. and just keep keep with that so that's awesome i know you and i had two i talked about flexing that outside space yeah. you know me i'm a I, lo I love just pulling up the grill and you mentioned yeah, that you love yeah, doing that too the fish fry right on yeah <laughs> okay we got some feedback the vegan lemon curd is good it's not as loose as non-vegan but i love um right. but i know yeah. what vegan desserts can be like right. um vegan tart is so delicious i love the crust very balanced 
Okay. Yes, yes. Flavors are totally there. Oh, flavors are totally there, though. Okay. Oh, my God. This candy lemon is... Pro oh, that's what... So this is the candy lemon? That's Listen, y'all. I almost did a backflip out my chair when I tasted this candy lemon. <laughs> <laughs> did you see... You saw my face when I... Did. When I saw my face, you gave me a nod. Like, yes, that is exactly what you tasted. Candy lemon. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. This is lemon. so good. Okay, good question, Ray. Where do you like to shop? We talked about John Eagle a little bit earlier. Oh, my goodness. I don't. <laughs> I hate shopping, but I like to go to my garden and get food as much mm. as I can. Her but, garden but, is beautiful. But, but, uh, but actually, um, I shop all over the county, and that's what makes it crazy because if there's one ingredient that I need or I like to have, and they said it's a, it's a Mount Lebanon, I head over to Mount Lebanon and mm. get it. Then I head to the Strip. Then I head to North for sales. I head to the East End Food Co-op. Mm -hmm. But um, but the if I say who has who gets the bulk of my money, it would be Trader Joe's, the East End Food Co-op, and um, I would say Giant Eagle, unfortunately. And but when the summer opens and it'll be the farmers market, mm. that's what will be the, yeah. That, that's what we get the lion's share. I prefer the farmer's yeah. market too. I definitely do. Um, you talking about your garden. Her garden is beautiful, by the way, y'all. Um, you had that table full of seedlings happening. What do you got going on over there? Oh, my God. I'll I, I tell you what I got going on. A lot of worry. Cause I, cause, <laughs> it's cold. I'm, yeah, it's cold. It's cold. I'm covering them up. Yeah. I'm, 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 and see, the heat, like, broke. Mm. And I tried to get another ball, but that was another long story. So I have, I have been covering them over. And taking them, you know, and but they're not. doing pretty good. I, for the ceilings, I have like all kinds of stuff. I got corn and beans, four or five different kinds, and onions mm -hmm. and peppers and tomatoes and greens and green vegetables and just all kind of stuff. Okay. Potatoes, I got four or five different types of potatoes growing. I love it. Yeah, I do. and I got beets. I got two or three different types of beets because I, you know, I can them, so mm -hmm. I make a lot of beets. Pepper, like peppers, all kind of peppers. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get a. Nice little garden going this year again. That's exciting. Have yeah. you always been into gardening as long as you've been into like, you know, food, like uh, cooking or when did that love start? Um, I have been into gardening, mm -hmm. but I haven't, I've ramped it up mm -hmm. since, since the last couple of years, but I would always grow a little something, nothing really big. I never really did like a real big, big garden, just like a, um, more like stuff in, in buckets on the back porch. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I more, that's more or less what I did. So we got some more questions. When can I get another lemon tart? We'll, we'll get into how we can get into <laughs> LFME a little bit later. What are Thank the puff you. puff balls made of? I noticed that it is much lighter. Uh, it is lighter than hush puppies. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, so what are the puff puff balls made of? They're made like <laughs> everything else with love. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> lead with love. We need yeah. a t-shirt that says lead, lead with love. love. Yeah. With a, with a fork and knife on the back. I like that. Right Let's there. do it. Yeah. You can have that one. So, so, so um, there, it, it, it's flour, turmeric, and spices. A little bit of baking uh, soda and yeast. Mm -hmm. And so you mix them up, let them set, and then you just, you know, you put them in. Um, I use uh, canola oil, mm -hmm. and they, you know, that's and they just fry them. Be nice. That's awesome. Kind of back to the gardening. Someone said, "Are your greens up already? And when did you start them?" Okay, the greens aren't up. I have a couple uh, lettuces that are up, okay. and they were from seeds from last year. They just start sprouting on their own. I had grew them in a uh, in a uh, wooden bucket, mm -hmm. you know, like those ones you get at uh, Home Depot. So mm -hmm. I got a couple big one of those, and I looked after them, grew them back again. They're about two inches tall. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I have a I have a few like herbs kind of you know I live in an apartment so I don't have tons of space. Okay. Um, I have some lemon balm. Mm -hmm. We have some thyme. Excuse me, we have uh, lemon balm time, peppermint, spearmint. Um, I did have some basil. I'll have some cilantro okay. going now. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of branched out branch there. Out. You know, I'm kind of nice. stepping to it a little bit and get yeah. flex my green thumb. Yeah, because you know what? That, that makes the meal so much nicer mm -hmm. when you got a little bit of uh, fresh herb and we can go back and pick something that you can. Oh, listen, I was sold nice. when, I, when I was able to go in the back get some basil and I went inside and made a pesto with it and it was so oh, good. good. I know wasn't it good? Fresh. I know the pesto. So I'm like I'm so I need a I need the rooftop with some solar panels. Yeah. Give me a whole listen my you know I talked about you know my mother gardens a little bit. I made her some braised beds and um she does so much you know she's talking about going to get a homestead. You know I'm so like no I want to stay yes, in the city. Nice. I want to stay you know but more and more now I'm like you know I just want to grow my food especially yeah. now the pandemic has kind of put it into right. perspective for me the different um, I guess you call it fight over food, food access, or, you know, yeah. especially in black and brown neighborhoods, food access is, you know, we talk about the Hill District, we talk about certain neighborhoods on the east side that are food deserts. 
I live in a food desert. You know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, so people, people yeah. like yourself who kind of lead food initiatives personally, you know, who have the knowledge mm -hmm. of growing, you know, that's really what we're all about here at Nafasi is trying to reach and teach, you know, really mm -hmm. stress that how, you know, how we're talking about how you're inspiring folks, folks are asking yeah. gardening tips too, you know, so I want to maybe take that a little bit deeper one day, maybe we'll, I'll come through and we'll do a spotlight here in Garden. That would be lovely. <laughs> when when the sun lovely. stays up. Yeah. <laughs> We'll do a garden tour. All right, folks. Um, you know, if there are any more questions, drop them in. I see. Okay, so we'll finish out with this also. How can people contact you? Let us know. They want to put in orders. They want okay. you to cater. Great. Thank you. Thank you guys so very much. It was a pleasure. I, you know, all the questions, all the interest into the food, into what I do. I just want to say thank you so, so very much. I'd be happy to prepare for any of you at any time. If you want, I will come to your home and cook for you. Long story short, how do you get in contact with me? My phone number is area code 412. Get a pen, get a piece of paper. Let's start over. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> okay. 412-901-0845. Now, I'm going to let you know right now. One more now. time. 412-901-0845. Four, five. Thank you, Marimba. I'm going to let you know right now. <laughs> I never answered the phone. <laughs> Tell them we play phone, we play phone tag all week. I don't. We I'm play sorry. Phone tag. I don't. So I was just I mean, come you to can call me by email. <laughs> you can hit you by email, but I'll usually see it three or four days later, or sometime maybe two months later. Um, it's just it's just I'm a strange. So what I'm hearing is you need an assistant. Oh uh, yeah, I do. Need an assistant. We need to get a niece or a nephew. We yeah. need to get somebody who's gonna answer that phone, right. answer those voicemails, and let you know. Yeah. Listen, that's because at true. the end of the day, that's money calling. That's true. I know. That's money calling. I know. Well, you know, we gotta get to the money. I know. And you know what? I guess I'm strange in this kind of way because I'm like I'm I'm like old now. I'm almost a hundred years old. <laughs> Not and, even close. <laughs> I am almost Not even about. close. So so like um, I just like I just like simple stuff. The old fashioned telephone and a letter in the mail. But I did do email. I did do Facebook. Listen, for some folks, leave you a voicemail. <laughs> listen, listen, I look, I, I call, I text. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I don't like playing phone tag. Ola Femi calls me. I'll like, message. Yeah. She'll call me right back. You right. know, we zooming all day. I told y'all, I'm the type of person to pop up. I was going to come. I was going to pop up like, listen, let's make this happen. Make but happen. So we, we're going to figure out a system that you're not overworked, that you're not okay. overstressed. We don't want you to sabotage. Okay. We're going to get you this money. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get it going. I know you, I know you're looking for a place to settle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to continue. You know I told you, I said, I said, I only want to do one week. That's how I got it. Loud. I know. I'm working on that second floor one, for you. One week a month. I understand. That's it. That's all I got. I'm working on that second floor restaurant for you. Now. What's your email address? Folks okay. want to know. What's your email address? Oh, my email address is easy. It's my first name, Ola Feme, O-L-A, F like Frank, E like Echo, M like mother, and I like igly. Ola Femme, the word food, F-O-O-D, and the word cook, C-O-O-K, at gmail.com. Ola Femme Food Cook. Ola Femme Food Cook. <laughs> That's beautiful. Show, show the folks the, oh, the brand. Ola name? Appetit, Ola Femme Manley. Oh, let me tell them one more thing. Please do. I forgot to tell them about my colors. Okay, um, the colors that I chose for Ola Appetit is... Tit um, I chose gray, which represents titanium. Okay. I have black, and I chose fuchsia. Now, fuchsia represents passion to me. You know, it's the passion colors. Mm -hmm. Pink is hot pink. So fuchsia represents the passion that I bring. Black represents the integrity. You know, they say being in the black or black tie, black, you know, formal. So that's what the black represents to me. And plus, I'm black, you know, or whatever. And... Um, <laughs> And then the other color is the gray, which represents titanium, which is the standard of excellence. Now, Joseph's Table, which is going to be my underground supper club. Oh, I, I can't wait for that. Their color is uh, blue and black. And I don't know, I'm going to get another color, but it'll probably be white. I'm not sure. I don't like white with the blue and black. But, but <clears throat> blue because out of the blue. Yes, tell us about that. Out of the blue. Joseph's table sprung out of the blue. And when I think about, when they say out of the blue, I think about everything coming out of the blue. We're on a blue planet and everything comes out of blue, out of water. And um, so 
I kind of use that color as the theme through the table to represent the blue of the earth. That's awesome. That I love. Yeah, and I'm sorry we couldn't share the um, table setting, but it's awesome. But um, as we move closer to the underground supper and things like that, you'll see it's not even just about her plating of the actual food, you know, the entire story and narrative that Olafemi tells with the table settings. And you hear how every piece has um, purpose. You know, she talked about the different colors and her branding. And we talk about the story behind her table setting. You know, once you even, I'll tell you, even before you, when you walk into a room, first you get hit, you get hit with the smelling sensation, you know, so that's your sensory right there, your nose. But then as you approach the table and you see the varying colors and you're kind of a little bit curious, okay, like why? And then she gets the story. So you can kind of see how it all encompasses together and there's purpose with that love. So, you know, th this is this is why we support you. This is why we love your food because you give us more than just good tasting food. You give us an entire sensory experience. I mean, what, what more could, uh, for someone who loves food, what more could I want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The only thing I need is my, my couch in my back now. <laughs> okay, there you go, yeah. I love yeah, it, I love it. It's, it. it's really culinary arts, you know, it's a craft. Um, and like you said, you know, you talked about earlier not going the traditional route of culinary school and formal education, but that's okay because there's a lot of folks who don't go the four-year college right. and they yeah. still make it, you know, you talk yeah. about making it in America, mm -hmm. things like that. So I think that your grind, your hustle, your perseverance, and your love for food is really what sets you apart because you can taste that in the food. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And that's genuine. No, 100%. It. You know I'm a fan. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know. Thank you so very much. Of course. I, I love it. Too, All right, my beautiful people. Well, we're going to close it out if there's no uh, no other questions. Let's check the chat. Uh, we can't wait to bring you to a physical location, location in the hell. That's right. We're working on it, y'all. Thank you. We're back, working I'll on it. I'll be back home. It'll be like coming back again. Full circle. <laughs> I, love, I, love I love it. I'll be coming back here. Like, this will be my last stop. And I'm, and I'm, I'm proud <laughs> to just be able to witness it and help steward yeah, this journey. I love it. All right, beautiful people. Is there any well, last words? Thank you all so very much. I appreciate you all. And I just want to leave you with one thing. Uh, this was this was Super Bowl Sunday. No, it was actually it was actually the day before Super Bowl. So this was in February 2016, and the Steelers were playing. Oh and, yeah. Um, I know that game. I was told by my landlady I had to get out the house and they was gonna put me in the street, y'all. And um, I was very much concerned. And um so I had um, was coming up the steps and I was really happy because she said she sold the house. So I was happy for her. I was genuinely happy because I knew it was a, I knew it was an issue, you know, because the house was in foreclosure. So I said to her, I'm so glad you sold the house. Mm -hmm. And I said to the man who was supposed to have bought the house, I'm so glad you got this property because it's a good property. And as I went up the steps, Nora Jones was playing come away with me. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel like angst in my heart because now I think I'm being put in the streets. So I started to feel like walking up, mm -hmm. like, you know. Mm -hmm. And then um, God spoke to me, he said, don't allow your spirit to go sour mm -hmm. like a lemon and don't become bitter like a lime. Lemons represent the spirit of jealousy and limes represent the spirit of envy. First you become sour, and then you become bitter. Okay. And bitter is worse because it's more personal, mm -hmm. because a person is envious of a specific thing. So everything that we eat has a physical property, nutritional value, and it has spiritual mm -hmm. meaning to everything that we ingest in our body, mm -hmm. even down to the smallest thing like bananas or oranges or apples. They water. all mean something. And yeah, <laughs> we're water too, but I don't know what exactly the water means, but I do know ear. <laughs> that we in breathe in represents the Holy Spirit because right. air gives you elevation, it gives you lift, right. you know, so, and the more air you fill your lungs with the higher you the go. ether. So with that being said, I just want y'all to stay sweet and kind and nice. All right. And um, I appreciate y'all so very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Olafemi. Thank, thank you, everyone, who participated. Thank, thank you for everyone Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful night. Hey, and thanks. until next Thank time, you. you know where to find me. You know where to find Olafemi now. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Wait. Thank wait. you. I want to say a uh, hi, Marimba. I hi. Just to say, hi. I was just want to say hi. Tell, hi. Her, tell everybody. So tell everybody where you're visiting My from. My name is Anne Manley. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm happy to be here to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you and for being I'm enjoying here. the nice food with you all too. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Good night. Peace, everybody.
All right. Bye. Bye.